Well, good morning, stampers. My name is Juanette, and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator here in the United States. Today, we are going to be making this very pretty floral envelope box card, and it was inspired by a paper crafter from the UK. Her YouTube channel is Mixed Up Craft, and her name is Samantha. She does absolutely fantastic work. So this first card I'm showing you is a birthday card and you can see it does open up. It stands very nicely. Then the next card I made was an Easter card and I will be giving this to my granddaughter Olivia for Easter. It has some pretty cellophane in the inside of the box. I also used some of our specialty vellum that is part of our celebration at Stampin' Up! It will end March the 31st. I ended up making four of these. Now, the box that Samantha made was using measurements from Europe. And so I believe their cardstock is a little bit bigger. So I adjusted the measurements so that I could use our standard eight and a half by 11 inch thick whisper white cardstock as opposed to my 12 by 12. I just fell in love with this. There's a little trellis there with some leaves. And so let's go over some of the supplies that will you that you will need to make this project. I sell all of these projects, so if you need any of these, please let me know. You will need some wooden dowels. And that is to hold up the little happy Easter banner. I made all of the flowers using flourishing phrases die set. I used Wonderful Romance die set for the trellis and some more of those little leaves and floral accents. I used Beautiful Bouquet. So pull whatever you have from your stash and make some flowers. The banner that I used is the stitched nested label dies. And then my words, Happy Easter, come from the Word Wishes die set. Now I'm real quick going to show you how I made the little roses. You will just take a two inch punch of some kind and I punched out two circles. You don't need the one that has that scalloped edge. You can just use a round one. You take your paper snips and you snip all around it, just like I'm doing there. You can use two if you need to make a larger one or just one. Then I took a sponge dauber and some Melon Mambo ink and just dabbed the edge of the cardstock to give it a little bit of color. And I did that with some of the petal pink. I did some with berry burst. And then what you're going to do is take the end of your cardstock, and I believed 
I used just our regular cardstock, our Whisper White for this because I wanted to be able to roll it so I did not use the thick Whisper White. And what you're going to do is just roll it into a small little ball there and then start adding your glue and glue them over each other. Now I have to apologize for my nails because I am sheltering in like a lot of us are. I did not go to the salon and get my nails done so they look pretty bad and I don't have the supplies here at my home to remove those powdered tips or to even take off the polish. So, oh well. My hands still work. That's the blessing. So just apply liquid glue and keep rolling up your rows. You can make it, make it as tight as you want or as loose as you want, depending on how you want your petals to look. And then just glue that bottom part to the very bottom of it and set it aside to dry. And because I want this rose to be a little bit larger, I added a second layer to it. Doing the same thing, just adhering it all the way around the first rose. Now because I wanted some sparkle on all of my flowers, I took some of our uh, shimmer paint and some alcohol and a little spray bottle that again we sell through Stampin' Up! and I sprayed all of my flowers just to give them a little bit of shimmer. And you can see I layered a lot of them. I put some of the embellishments in the middle of them, some of our rhinestones. I went, uh, went ahead and adhered some of the greenery. I used mint macaroon for that. So to make your envelope box card, you're going to take a piece of eight and a half by eight and a half thick whisper white cardstock and your envelope punch board. And what you're going to do is you're going to punch and, and score at three and three eighths, then move it over and punch and score at four and three eighths. Then rotate your cardstock and line up that first score line with that little pointy thing there. I don't know what that's called, but you're going to line it up and you're going to punch and score at that area. Move it over line up that score line and punch and score again. Then rotate it to the opposite side and this time you're going to line up that little indentation there that you've punched out. You're going to line it up right there with that score line punch and score, then move it over and again line it up right there with the score line and punch and score. Now as you turn it over to the opposite end of the very first area that you punched and scored, you're going to line up your score line, but you are only going to punch. You are not going to score. Then move it over and punch again. Do not score these areas because you want that top area of the box to not be scored so that it gives you a little bit more stability in your box. So then fold and burnish those three sides that you have scored and punched using your bone folder.
and so that's what you will have there. Then you're going to take your paper snips and with that area that you did not score up toward the top, that first score line there, you're going to take your paper snips and cut up to the first score line to create a tab and then you're going to just take a small little wedge off and that will help with folding it up. Then you're going to take the opposite side and do exactly the same thing. Cut up to the score line and then remove a small little wedge. And I'm just cleaning up that score line right there. So you've created two tabs at the bottom there. Then where the top is, you are just going to cut away that entire tab. Now you've not scored where my first cut line is, but you just line your paper snips so that you are cut evenly to the score line and then remove that whole little tab area. So that is how your Whisper White cardstock should look at this point. And you can see as I fold it in, it looks like an envelope. So then you're going to bring in your envelope punch board again. And you're going to bring in your pattern paper. And this is 8 and 3 eighths by 8 and 3 eighths. And it is best if you have a paper that is not a directional paper. And you're going to punch and score exactly the same way you did with the Whisper White at 3 and 3 eighths and 4 and 3 eighths, just like you did before. If you need to, rewind the video so that you can, you can see how I did the white. And as I lay it in there, you can see, because it is a little bit smaller than the Whisper White, I will have a little bit of border all around my card. So then take your pattern paper that you have scored, folded, and burnished, and bring in your paper trimmer and you're going to cut all of those score lines away from each other. So line that score line right up in the track of your paper trimmer and completely cut that away and you will be left with a triangle piece for your card then cut off that other strip rotate it it makes it a little bit easier to line it up here because you have a straight edge and remove each piece cutting on the score line exactly then trim about an eighth of an inch from each of those triangle pieces from the bottom and this will give you a nice little border Do that on all three of them. And so you can see as I lay it there on the front, it gives me a nice little border. Then you will take a piece of five and a half by eight inch colored vellum and you will lay that piece that you cut away from your pattern paper, lay it over the top and then just draw some little pencil lines so you'll know where to cut. Now that is an embossed piece of vellum, so I am cutting it, or excuse me, I am marking my pencils on the debossed side or the flat side. Then you're going to take a piece of eight by five and a half pear pizzazz, and you're going to lay that pattern piece over the top of it and mark just like the previous one and the same with this Whisper White piece. 
So you're going to bring in your paper trimmer, take your whisper white piece, line it up, and because this is going to be matted on top of that pair of pizzazz, you want to cut just a smidgen or maybe an eighth of an inch on the inside of that pencil mark. Then lay that pencil mark just over your paper trimmer in the track and cut so that it looks similar to the pattern piece. Then for the pear pizzazz piece, you are going to cut exactly where your pencil marks are at because the white piece will go over this and you want a little bit of a border of the pear pizzazz behind the whisper white. And then you're going to do the same thing for your vellum. Then bring in the detailed trio punch and you're going to round off the top of each one of those pieces. Now your vellum will go on the inside of your box card. And because I wanted a little bit more of a border, I trim off maybe an eighth of an inch off of both sides. And see, that gives me a better border of that Whisper White. Now I have some vellum tape runner and it does show a little bit. I bought it off of Amazon, but it's better than your regular glue. So I'm applying that tape runner to the back of the vellum just at the bottom and both sides. I will have that raised area of the vellum turned over so that you will be able to fill it in the box. And then I just took a little glue dot and here, adhered it to the top of the vellum and then laid that into the inside of my box. And now it's glued down. Then I took, I believe that's quarter inch uh, tear and tape and apply just a small little strip on the inside over that vellum and this is so that my cellophane will not fall out of the box. And this will be completely hidden so don't worry about it showing. That mono um, Sand eraser is wonderful for erasing pencil marks and, and ink spots. So then you will take your triangles of your pattern paper and I'm using my favorite glue, my 3-in-1 Beacons glue because it gives you extra strength in your cards and you're going to glue it so that it will be on the outside of your box. So make sure you glue it correctly. So do you see how when I turn it up you can see it? And you're going to do the same for each of the sides. So you can see as I will fold up my box, you will be able to see that pattern paper. And that pattern paper, I can't remember if I told you, is designer series paper. Uh, 
that is called Garden Lane. It's beautiful. And I felt like I needed a little bit more of a border, so I just take my paper snips and trim off a little bit there on those sides. Isn't that going to be pretty? And then I took the strips that were also from that pattern paper. I trimmed them down. I think they are about four to four and a quarter inches in length. And I just adhere them to both sides of the box. They may be three fourths of an inch in width, but you can just measure them. And you actually can leave them off if you don't want them on your box. That's fine. I just like that it gives a little bit more strength to your box and decorates it a little bit. So now we're going to put our box together. So apply some liquid glue or you could use tear and tape to the outside of that first tab, then bring it in side and adhere it to the bottom of your box. Now it is a little bit uh, finicky to do because you have that one flap kind of in your way. But if you just take your time making sure you have a right angle and holding it in place, I tend to become impatient and uh, don't let it stick. So it ends up pulling away and then I have to hold it there again. But that's the great thing about uh, liquid glue. It does give you a little bit of wiggle room. You can take your bone folder and press it on the inside if you need to. Then do the same thing on the other side. Apply liquid glue on the outside. Bring it into the inside of your box, creating a right angle there, and hold it in place. Now I'm sure, I'm not quite sure how big of a piece of cellophane wrap I have there. Mm. I apologize that I didn't measure that out, but kind of just crinkle it up. You can buy that at any of your craft stores. I remove the double-sided tape and I apply it to the inside. Now. I would recommend that you wait on doing that and I'll tell you why because I have to measure the card that will be attached to the back of the box and it was a little bit finicky to draw the outlines with my pencil. Now here again I make a small little mistake here but again thank goodness for liquid glue. You should not apply your glue to the outside of that middle flap, you want to apply your glue to the bottom of the side flap. So I just take a little baby wipe here and I wipe it away. And because we are going to put so much embellishment on the front of this box, you won't even be able to see it. So apply glue to the bottom of that side panel there. Fold up your middle panel there and hold it in place. And then a little glue on the other side and again hold it in place. Isn't that pattern paper just beautiful? It's just perfect for this background.
Now you're going to take a 10 and a half by 8 inch piece of thick Whisper White cardstock. You're going to score it at 5 and a fourth, fold it, and burnish. And now you're going to see why I wish I hadn't adhered that cellophane yet. So what you're going to do is just line it up, make some pencil marks so you will know where to cut so that you will have the same kind of an edge for the back of the envelope. Or the card, I should say. I apologize. So round the top off like you did the other ones. Then you're going to glue it to the back of the box. Now make sure that it will open up correctly. So ap apply glue to the back of your box and then lay your envelope. Oh, I just can't speak your card so that it will open up the correct way. Then your pear pizzazz piece will go on the inside of that card. And because I want a little bit of a border, I trim off about an eighth of an inch off of both, both sides and the bottom. And see, I have a nice little border all around. And I do the same thing to that uh, Whisper White piece. And remember, we had already cut it a little bit smaller because we knew it was going to be matted on top of the pear pizzazz piece. A little bit more off that bottom. That's the fun thing about paper crafting and card making is figuring out your sizes and making things work, taking care of mistakes that you might make, hiding them. And so now you're going to adhere the Whisper White piece over the top of the pear pizzazz using your liquid glue. Or you could use a tape runner, your snail. Again, like I've said before, I love that glue because it gives a lot of strength to your card. And because that one edge over on that right-hand side seemed to be a little bit wider than the left-hand side, I just take my paper trimmer and I trim it off just a smidge and then take my paper snips and round off that right-hand corner a little bit. Then we're going to adhere that to the inside of your card. And that's where you will write your mes message to the recipient. Then our pattern paper will go on the left-hand side there. And again, because I want a little bit more of a border, I just trim off a little bit of it. Be sure to save all of those scraps to make your own designer series paper.
So to decorate your dowel, it's 3 16th of a round dowel, and I cut it to eight and a half inches. I have my glue gun plugged in. It's been plugged in for about 15 minutes. I took some of that gorgeous gray granite textured we re weave ribbon, <laughs> and I wrap it around that dowel. Now you can see in my flowers, I've got some silver, some rhinestones, and um, silver foil. So that's why I picked that gray granite color. It looks silver to me, and I love that it has that white edging on each side. So I apply just a little bit of glue from my glue gun, and then wrap it around pulling on it tautly, taking care not to burn myself. I didn't. I think I got a little glue on me, but I didn't burn myself. I may have to uh, Facebook Salmon and um, See if she's done this before with the dowels, wrapping them in ribbon. I don't think she had done that with hers, but I really like the look. How silly of me. Of course Sam has done it. She is, she was, uh, she is the card maker of the year over in the uh, either UK or, or Europe, so she is fantastic. I have learned so much from her. Please catch her YouTube channel. She is just absolutely delightful. And I use my wooden dowel there just so that I will not burn myself. See, like I said, I do get glue all over myself, but I don't burn myself. So now this is the fun part, decorating the front of your box. Now many of you know that I commute back and forth uh, to work in California. Thank goodness right now I am in Arizona. I unfortunately have been a little bit sick, however I don't believe I have the coronavirus. I do not have a fever but I've been quite tired and can only do a little bit of crafting at short periods periods of time. But my son and I are staying indoors. We have all of our needs and wants at this point. And members of my church have been checking on us and we are safe. And I hope each one of you is also safe and that you have everything you need. My prayers are with each and every one of you. And I pray for our, not only our country, but the world at this time. Now, as I finish decorating this uh, box up, I am going to put on some music and again rest assured that I am doing well. I don't believe I have the coronavirus, but I have been a little bit ill.
Now as I finish decorating the outside of the box, I add a little pop of color with Berry Burst cardstock and some die cut roses there. Then I add the sentiment that is glued to the dowel. And what I do is I place that dowel inside of the envelope box and measure with my hand how far up I want to apply the glue from my glue gun. Now, unfortunately, I did get a little bit of glue on the cellophane. However, I was able to remedy that by just cutting away that piece of cellophane. If there are any of these supplies you would like, please visit my online 24-7 store and I would be happy to supply you with these items. And before I go, I would like to leave a scripture with you. If you don't want to hear the scripture, you can end the video right now. However, if you would like to hear it, it is from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. And it states, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So thank you for joining me. I appreciate you watching my video tutorials, and I would love to see what you make during this time of sheltering in. Stay safe, everyone, and my love goes out to each and every one of you. Goodbye.